I hope you brought your singing voice today because this video is going to be interactive. So we're going to worship and sing together as we practice these tools so that by the time the video is over, you can go into the secret place on your own and begin to experience the Holy Spirit as he's leading you and drawing near to you as you worship. Are you wanting a deeper walk with the Holy Spirit, one where you're experiencing his manifest presence in new ways and fresh ways, where you're able to discern his leading in your life and to hear his voice? Perhaps right now you're feeling kind of stuck. You go to pray or to read your Bible and you're not sensing his presence or you're having a difficult time hearing his voice. Maybe when you go to praise and to worship, you find yourself just kind of saying the same things over and over. A deep relationship with the Holy Spirit is rooted in the secret place. And the Bible tells us the way to enter that secret place is through praise and thanksgiving. Psalm 100 verse 4 says, enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. And we know that the Bible tells us that the Lord inhabits the praises of his people. Psalm 22 verse 3. In this video, I'm going to give you four tools to help you to enter the presence of the Holy Spirit and then to discern his leading in worship and praise that's in the spirit. The Bible tells us to worship in spirit and in truth, meaning in the truth of the word of God and who he is, but then also being led by the spirit. If you are new to this channel, my name is Bethany Hughes. I'm the founder and CEO of Her Hope Ministries. And the purpose of this channel is to equip you in both the word of God and your relationship with the Holy Spirit, because those have to go together in the life of a believer. All right, let's dig in. I hope you brought your singing voice today because this video is going to be interactive. So we're going to worship and sing together as we practice these tools so that by the time the video is over, you can go into the secret place on your own and begin to experience the Holy Spirit as he's leading you and drawing near to you as you worship. The Bible says to sing a new song unto the Lord. So this first tool is learning to adjust words of worship songs based on how the Holy Spirit is speaking and leading your heart. So we're going to use a couple of worship songs that already exist, and I'm going to just show you three different ways that you can adjust these words as the Holy Spirit puts it on your heart. So the first song let's use is Glorify Thy Name. It's an old chorus. I hope that you know it. Can we just sing it the first part together? Father, we love you. We worship, we adore you. Glorify thy name in all the earth. Glorify thy name. Glorify thy name. Glorify So we enter his presence with a song like that and the Holy Spirit begins to minister to you and to tug on your heart to make that song more personal. So right now we're singing glorify your name in the whole earth, but we can bring it down into a closer, more intimate prayer of glorify your name in my heart or in my life or in my family, depending on how the Holy Spirit's leading you during the worship, worship session. So let's pray this now. Uh, glorify thy name in my life. Can we sing it together? Father, we love you. We worship, we adore you. Glorify thy name in my life. Glorify thy name. Glorify thy name. Glorify Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. The next way that you could adjust the words would be to adjust who you're singing the song on behalf of. So for example, the song, Lord, I need you. That song is written in first person saying that I need you. Can we sing that chorus? Lord, I need you. Oh, I need you. Every hour I need you. My one defense, my righteousness. Oh, God, how I need you. But we could take that song and then change it as a prayer or intercession for someone else. So thinking of someone in your life right now who you pray for. Maybe your spouse, your kids, 
your church, a colleague. All right, you have someone in mind. So now we're going to pray. Instead of saying, Lord, I need you, we can pray and sing it on their behalf. For example, Lord, she needs you, or Lord, they need you. Or if you're going to sing it on behalf of you and your spouse, Lord, we need you. I'm going to sing this song on behalf of my students. So I'm going to sing, Lord, they need you. But you pick a person and let's sing it together on behalf of them, praying it for them. Okay? Lord, they need you. Oh, they need you. Every hour they need you. Their one defense, their righteousness. Oh God, how they need you. The third way that you can adjust lyrics is take songs that sing about the Lord and change the lyrics to be singing specifically to the Lord. And we know whether the song is about the Lord or directly to the Lord, of course we're singing it to him. But changing the lyric really can change the atmosphere and the presence of the Holy Spirit. Something my dad taught us when we were very little is to notice that and that you can change the words to be directly to the Lord instead of about the Lord. So for example, there's a really old chorus that goes, his name is wonderful. His name is wonderful, Jesus my Lord. So it's singing about him, but you can take songs like that and change it from his name is wonderful to your name is wonderful. So let's just sing this short chorus together and then we're going to change it from his name to your name. His name is wonderful. His name is wonderful. His name is wonderful. Jesus, my Lord, he is the mighty king, master of everything. His name is wonderful. Jesus, my Lord. Now let's change it and sing it directly. Your name is wonderful. Your name is wonderful. Your name is wonderful. Jesus, my Lord, you are the mighty King, master of everything. Your name is wonderful. Jesus, my Lord. What's wonderful about these tools is that as you're posturing your heart in worship before the Lord with a song that already exists, you're also surrendering to the Holy Spirit's move and allowing him to put people on your heart and put lyrics on your heart and put prayers on your heart through these songs. Ephesians 5.19 tells us to be filled with the Spirit and then to sing songs from the Spirit. The Holy Spirit loves music. He loves to inspire worship and sing. Singing. We also know from Psalm 149, sing a new song unto the Lord. The next tool that's going to completely change your worship and prayer time is to borrow the tune of a song. What I mean by that is, is you take the melody, but then you allow the Holy Spirit to minister to your heart what he wants worshiped back to him. And you sing those words to the Holy Spirit or you sing in tongues to that tune. I can say personally that when I learned how to do this, it was like a floodgate was opened in my life and it became, instead of just depending on the music and the chords as a worship leader, when I'd go to the piano, it would be that the Holy Spirit would birth new songs and I didn't need current songs. He was giving me new songs and new chords and new tunes to sing back to him and his presence would draw so close so many times that I would be at the piano. I would be weeping in his presence and just feeling the closeness of the Holy Spirit, hearing his voice drawing near to me. Let's try this with the hymn, I Surrender All. Let's just sing the chorus together to get the tune and in our mind. Okay, here we go. I surrender all. I surrender all. All to Jesus I surrender. I surrender all. So let's take that tune. Da, 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 da. And let's put our own words in, whatever the Holy Spirit puts on our heart. So maybe something like this. I 
will praise your name. I will praise your name. I will live to bring you glory. I will praise your name. And then maybe I will thank your name. I will serve your name. We also, as I said, could do this in tongues. Take the tune, and just like we added our own words in English, you can sing the tongues to that tune. And it really begins to help your heart to sing through the Spirit. So, for example, taking the same tune. Sha sa do sha na Sa sha do sa do Sha sa na sha do sha na sa Sha sa da sha do the third tool is the opposite. So instead of borrowing the tune of a song, you borrow the words. And then you use those words as a tool to learn how to hear and sense from the Holy Spirit a new melody, a new tune. So we can take the words, I surrender all, I surrender all, all to thee, my blessed Savior, I surrender all. And we can change the tune. Okay, so let's try this. I surrender all, I surrender all, all to Thee, my precious Savior, I surrender all. This is something that might take some time, especially if you're not a musician, but be encouraged. Psalm 101 says, make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Come into his presence with singing. You don't have to be the most amazing singer or musician. The Holy Spirit is the one that's going to bring the tune and bring the words to your heart as we worship in him, worship surrendered to him. You know, the Holy Spirit loves music. As we posture ourselves before him, the Holy Spirit begins to minister to us. He begins to give us words of praise. He begins to give us new tongues to praise and to sing and pray in. The fourth tool is to use the words of scripture and praise them back to the Lord. Psalm 119 verse 160 says, the sum of your word is truth. If we're going to worship in spirit and in truth, we have to know the truth of the word of God. We have to know who the Lord is. We need to know the names of the Lord. We need to know the character of the Lord so we can then thank him for those things and praise him for those things. Psalm 113 says this beautifully, verse 1 through 3. Praise the Lord. Praise, O servants of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Let the name of the Lord be praised both now and forevermore. From the rising of the sun to the place where it sets, the name of the Lord is to be praised. You can take psalms like that and start to sing them, even just speaking them out. We know that praise and worship is not only music, it's also spoken. And we focused here on music a lot and the Holy Spirit stirring up songs in us. But you can also speak the Bible back to the Lord or sing that back to the Lord. Do you guys know that old, old chorus? Oh my gosh, from when I was a kid. Um, of that passage, it starts out, From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, the Lord's name is to be praised. That brings back so many memories of my dad with his guitar, and he'd always start the song really low, from the rising of the sun. Oh my gosh, and all oh, good memories. But there are so many people that have taken the Psalms and other Bible verses and put them to music. Why can't you? You don't have to be the most amazing musician. You have the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the one who inspires our worship and inspires our praise. Some music that you could listen to that will also help you to learn the word and how to praise the word will be Shane and Shane's CDs. Wonderful, wonderful. They take the Psalms word for word and some of the hymns word for word. Others are Brooklyn Tabernacle Choir. The presence of the Lord and the anointing on that group is just fantastic. And they sing a lot of scripture in their songs. If you're my age or older, you probably remember Amy Grant's song from way back, was it the 80s? El Shaddai, based on the names of the Lord. Beautiful song. A great one even now to sing and to listen to. El Shaddai, 
El Shaddai, Eliana Adonai, age to age you're still the same, by the power of the name, El Shaddai, El Shaddai, ere come Kana Adonai, we will praise and lift you high, El Shaddai. Something like that. But just beautiful, beautiful worship. Take these tools back to the secret place with you. Come with a heart ready to worship. Come with a heart ready to praise the Lord. And start with music that you know. Start with songs that you know. And then as you posture yourself before the Holy Spirit, surrender to Him, listening to Him, He will minister to your heart. He will bring lyrics and words He wants you to pray to Him. Have your Bible open on your knees with you. And as you're singing and as you're praising, turn to a psalm and begin to read it out loud. Begin to sing it out loud. Your relationship with the Holy Spirit is an outflow of the secret place. Draw near to him. The Bible tells us draw near to God and he will draw near to you. It's a promise and he wants to do it. If you are someone that has the gift of tongues, I'm going to put a video here at the end that goes through how to grow in your understanding of that gift and how to sharpen that gift so you can intercede and worship with it and draw close to the Holy Spirit in the secret place. And if you're wanting more ways to grow close to the Holy Spirit, I'm going to put a link down in the description of a video where I go through ways to draw near to him.